At this point, throughout the Python is Awesome series, I've covered a lot of really cool and really useful Python libraries like Itatools and Collections and all that stuff, but I haven't yet covered Funk Tools, and there is a good chance that you've seen some Funk Tools usage around, and Funk Tools is actually one of the more useful um, libraries to have, especially if you're thinking about doing some really jank stuff. It's quite powerful in terms of that. So, if I just bring my notes to the other screen, uh, there are three things I'm going to talk about as always. I have kind of picked out certain things that I want to talk about, you know, the most useful uh, things that I can think of. Um, in this case, I've chosen the things that you've probably seen around. Um, so there is actually a really good chance that you've seen this already and maybe, you know, don't know what it does. Um, but there is some other stuff to it. Funk Tools isn't as extensive as other um packages so there is only really one or two other things the reason i'm not necessarily including those is because they're either you know alternative implementations of stuff or really complicated probably you know to the point where it could have its own video so i'm going to be covering wraps partials and caching today so we're going to do from funk tools uh import wraps partial and then cache the reason i'm doing all that that is because generally speaking uh from what i can tell um that is kind of the convention to do you know from funk tools import wraps from funk tools import partial and just do that so that's what i'm doing like this uh, and we're going to be predominantly working on a function called add which simply uh, as the doc string says, adds two numbers together, and the doc string is important uh, for something we're going to be showing you. And that just returns, and actually, no, it's going to print x plus y. Just yeah, saves us having to do a load of prints later down the line. So, the first thing I'm going to show you is about the wraps. So, the wraps um, is useful when using decorators, and it basically kind of adapts the decorator to have the correct information when you choose to present it that was kind of a bad explanation but if i uh, you know i'll show you what i'm talking about and then it will make more sense so we have our with greeting which takes our function and then we have our def wrapper which takes our args and then quags and this is how you do it normally without funk tools wraps and then we're just going to have uh print hello world and then we're going to return the funk with our args and then our quags, and then we're going to turn wrapper. So that is a standard decorator. I've already done a video on decorators if you're not familiar with them. And then we're going to decorate our function uh, with our greeting decorator. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do, and I'm going to do it like this because I'm fancy. I've also done a video on what that means if you want to see that. Um, and we'll do, you know, add two and then five, and then we'll print add dot name so this prints the function name and then print add dot doc which prints the function doc string and if i run uh funk tools tut dot pi we can see that we get the hello world that is printed here we um you know calculate our sum to be seven and then the name is wrapper and then the doc is none which shouldn't happen or at least we don't want it to happen uh, so this happens because the function well this happens because of some weirdness um so when the decorator you know decorates a function it returns this wrapper which is executed kind of instead of this so this gets passed into here and then what's actually being executed is this and when we return the wrapper we're technically transforming this function into this function um, which one uh, doesn't have a doc string and has the name wrapper. So what we can do is we can decorate the wrapper with wraps and then provide the, the actual function object. And what this does is it changes the name of this function to this function and then adds the doc string to it. So if you run it again, we can see that we have the same hello world, we have the same seven, but our funk name is now add, which is you know, correlative to this, and our doc string is adds two numbers together, which is correlative to this. So generally speaking, you pretty much always want to use funk tools wraps, um, which is why out of all the things in this video, you've probably seen that one the most. So if you're ever unsure about what that did, it's simply just a mechanism. It's it's kind of an optional mechanism. You don't really need it, um, but it's just a mechanism to make, you know, 
using decorators a little bit nicer and a little bit you know kind of reduce unexpected behavior uh, which is kind of cool so i'm just going to reset everything because we're going to continue using the same function i will keep you now i'll keep the decorator there um, but we'll just remove it from this. And we're gonna talk about partials next. Partials are defined in the Python documentation as freezing kind of certain implementations to then be run later. And um, I prefer to think of it more like we're preloading functions ready to be run. So a partial is essentially a function with an argument already pre-passed to it. So we can have our add here. Or we can have, you know, uh, add two and five uh, equals partial add two and then five. So what this does is it creates a partial object where the func is our add. So this is the thing that's going to be called. And two and five are our arguments. So two is going to be passed to x and five is going to be passed to y. And then if we do add two and five and we don't pass any arguments at all, we get seven once again, because we have preloaded two and five into our arguments. Uh, and this is particularly useful if you have like a for loop or something that's setting um, functions to like variables or something, because if you do it with a for loop, uh, sometimes depending on the actual implementation the arguments will always be set to like the last ones it's it, it's kind of strange and weird to get your head around but in a sense well in, in a sense the frozen thing kind of comes into it because this is now set you know if we had you know x equals three uh, here and then we set this to be x and then we set x equals four this would still be eight because we've now, you know, set x, uh, because x was 3 when the partial was created, this is now set as 3. So it doesn't matter what we do with x later on, x will always be 3, or when we call add 2 and 5, we'll always be passing 3 to x. Um, so I'm going to set that back. Um, and you can actually do this with just a single argument. So doing something like this is perfectly fine. Um, and you can do add two, and then you have say five, and then we get our seven and seven. So what this is doing is it's preloading two as x, but y still hasn't been set. So we can then pass five in here. So this five is going to the partial object, which already has something for x. So this five is actually y, and then we add two to it as we do in the function because x is set to two in the partial. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> It's probably one of those things where you, you might need to kind of use it to get your head around it. Um, but partials are really, really useful. Uh, there are some situations where you would actually want to use partials over lambdas. So lambdas don't have this freezing property about them. So if you need something to be frozen, like you had in that X example earlier, then you'd want to use partial and not Lambda for that. So I was just about to move on to the next thing and I actually forgot to mention something. Uh, you can have, uh, uh, you can use partial for methods as well, but you do need to use the separate partial method um, function rather than partial uh, if you're doing that. They work slightly differently, but it basically works for methods. Uh, so there is a, a separate method implementation um, in case you want to do that sort of thing with methods instead of functions. Uh, so the next thing we're going to talk about, or the final thing we're going to talk about today, is the cache. So if I stick this here, this is now um, a cacheable function. So basically what this does is it caches the return value of a function um, based on its parameters. So I will actually need to, to do a return x plus y here. And then we will need to do print <clears throat> add two and five. Uh, and to show this off, I'm going to import time. And then we're going to uh, simulate a very complex adding function by doing time.sleep2. So this is going to sleep for two seconds. Uh, this simulates a particularly expensive callable, which is kind of the only reason why you'd want to do it with a cache, because obviously if you cache something that increases the memory complexity, ever so slightly. 
Uh, but of course it does reduce the time complexity. So if we then print add two and five, and then we print add two and five again, and I am gonna do a print running so you can kind of see. You can see that it's running, it's waiting for the two seconds, and then we get the seven twice. Uh, once when we're calling it from here, and once when we're calling it from here. You know, if I do uh, uh, not cached, uh, this should make it a bit clearer. Uh, cached like that. Oh god, what on earth? What have I done? What have I done? There we go. I think I just hit backspace by accident. So you can see the not cache result is seven, and the cache result, because it's the same parameters, are seven. But if we were to run this again with, say, three and five, it would need to actually run again because they're not the same parameters. So this caching does allow you to pass different things into the function, but cache is the same things. You know, if you're going to be calling the same function with the same parameters over and over again, then the caching is something you probably want to look into. One caveat is that the order of operations does matter. So if I were to say do five and then two, instead of two and five, it would run the first time, it would then run the second time and then run the third time because while the numbers are the same, X and Y are different values and the cache has no way of knowing that you're passing the same numbers in. It just checks against the actual parameter values. So just keep in mind that ordering does matter. Even if ordering doesn't matter in your implementation, you might want to change it so it does if you are going to use the cache, especially if it's something particularly expensive. Uh, there is also, if you have like a property, which is actually how I learned about, uh, about this existing in the first place, you have your cache property here as well, um, which essentially works kind of the same, just that, you know, uh, the property only needs to run once. So you only want to do this if the property is probably immutable, but particularly expensive to calculate um, for whatever reason. So you then have this property. So whenever you access it again, it then accesses the cache rather than having to do all the expensive calculations again. Um, you can also do, well, it's, it's, it's essentially equivalent of using the property and then the cache uh, decorator separately, which you can do, but you also have cache property if you just want to use the one decorator for it. Um, but yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about with Funk Tools. There are some other cool things as part of Funk Tools, but as I said, they're either just slightly different ways of doing things or, you know, so complicated that they need their own videos, which I'm thinking about doing, but uh, I don't necessarily know. Um, and if I do a video on this topic, you'll understand why. I'm thinking about maybe not doing it. But yeah, if you like this video, then make sure to leave a like to let me know and maybe subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos like this. If you have any questions or ideas for future videos, then feel free to leave a comment. I read them all, um, so the feedback would be greatly appreciated. If you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so in one of two ways. First of which, by becoming a patron. The second of which, by becoming a member using the join button below. Uh, one pound a month on either, and you can be on this screen like these people. And I will see you in the next video where I may come back to Funk Tools, I may decide to do something else. It's probably going to be something else, and then I might come back to it the following week. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll see you for whatever it may be next Saturday.